everybody seems to have their opinion about mouthpiece buzzing and how to do it and what it's good for, how much to do. So I'd like to go ahead and, and um, express my opinion on the subject. I believe mouthpiece buzzing can be beneficial, but I also think it's easy to overdo it. You don't really need a lot of it, uh, but I do use it to build tone and to improve accuracy and phrasing. So um, as a tool, I put it in the category with all my other tools, and I use it myself and I use it sometimes with my students, but I don't overuse it. If you find yourself buzzing your mouthpiece, 30 to 45 minutes a day, my opinion is that's probably too much. Now, if you don't have your horn and you need to keep your chops together, well, that's a special situation and I could see doing that so long as you don't do it too often. The first thing to remember when buzzing your mouthpiece is that the embouchure is in charge. The embouchure is in charge. Uh, and what that means is that as you move up and down the range, there will be shape changes here. The jaw might move in or out in order to go up or down. Let the mouthpiece follow that and let the instrument follow that. So uh, using mouthpiece buzzing to learn that is a great way to do it because you just got the mouthpiece. You don't have this 12 pound hunk of metal that's you know, holding you down in a matter of speaking. So I kind of like the idea of holding with two fingers and as you negotiate the range, allow the uh, mouthpiece angle to change. So I'm not moving it, I'm just letting it move because my embouchure wants it to move. And um, so let the embouchure be in charge. A lot of people go for a very compact laser beam tone with the buzz. I've actually found the opposite to be true is if you get a diffuse or a, an airy buzz that's really sort of spread out, I'm really, I'm not working very hard at all. I'm using very, very little effort here. If I plug that sort of buzz into my trombone, then it creates what I view as maximum resonance. I'll buzz just like that into the horn. Once again, I'm not working very hard, um, and in the instrument, that's an airy sort of diffuse buzz. If I hold that note, and I go from that sort of buzz down to the, the real uh, laser beam one, here's what it sounds like. Feels like I'm working way too hard and you can hear the, the bad tone that results. So um, I'd prefer to work smarter, <laughs> not harder. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't work hard. Of course you should, but um, in this sense, allowing the lips to, to flow and vibrate means we get a diffuse buzz and that results in maximum resonance with minimal effort. I'll take that every time. The next issue is to allow the buzz to be a gliss in certain situations. My favorite way to demonstrate this is with the Sanson Organ Symphony. The opposite approach would be this. Where each note seems to have its own notch. Now, <clears throat> I will say it depends on the situation. Of course, there are times when you really need to notch the buzz. <clears throat> but in this situation, it's very lyrical. You want it to be creamy and smooth and connected. 
And a great way to achieve that is to gliss the buzz, smear the buzz. Um, I like to create what I call a cutaway. And you can see all I did was cut part of that mouthpiece away. I have a vice in my garage and my students bring me their old mouthpieces they don't need anymore and we'll create cutaways for them. And when you put the cutaway in, you can check and see if you're glissing the buzz. Now, this is very much like a product that's called a burp, B-E-R-P, and that's just a piece of plastic that's connected to another piece of plastic, which comes off to the side, and you put your regular mouthpiece in there. And then, when you play your instrument, you can buzz and move your slide, just like I did. The big difference is, with a cutaway, the mouthpiece is dead on where it belongs. With a burp, the mouthpiece is actually off to the side a little bit. And I found that really distracting, actually, when I went to use it. So that's where I came up with this idea. I think it's, you know, if you've got a mouthpiece that you don't need, obviously, then it's a really good tool. You can use it for other things, too. Um, and then one last use for buzzing, and that is to improve accuracy. So if I'm having trouble getting the right notes. <laughs> something with some intervals that are a little funny, I'll buzz that accurately. Now, if you were listening closely, you would have heard a note or two that's out of tune. That's the thing, is that you have to be very, very specific and get it really, really in tune. So I have a tendency to play that note too high, to buzz it too high. And in this case, the difference between the lower C flat and the higher C natural is very, very important. case it's C flat and then the next case it's C natural. You can clear up little areas like that if you're buzzing in tune, but you have to be very specific about the intonation of the buzz.